everyone and today I've got another poem written by Robert Frost from your book First Flight of Class 10th. The name is Fire and Ice. Nature has its way of creating and destroying things and two things which are capable of destroying the entire life and property, this entire world, are fire and ice. But in this poem, Fire and Ice, Robert Frost has made a comparison of these two destructible forces of nature with two emotions which are also equally bad or damaging for us. Fire is compared to our desires and ice is compared to hatred. So today we are going to read and understand this poem followed by the summary, then poetic devices and rhyme scheme. After that, moral and question answers related to this. But before we start, as usual, let's know something about Robert Frost, the poet of this poem. Robert Lee Frost was born on 26 March 1874 in San Francisco, California. He was an American poet, but his work was initially published in England before it was published in the US. The only poet to receive four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry, he was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal in 1960 for his poetic works. On July 22, 1961, Frost was named Poet Laureate of Vermont. His well-known poems are The Road Not Taken, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, Mending Wall, Nothing Gold Can Stay, and more. He died on 29 January 1963 in Boston, Massachusetts, US. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favour fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate. To say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. The poem expresses this idea that the world would end in either of two ways, either by ice or by fire. So one group of people feel that the world will end because there will be a massive fire and this fire will destroy life and property. And the other group of people say that this entire world will get frozen, everything will become ice. And of course, it will lead to the destruction of this world. The poet is comparing fire and ice here with two destructive human emotions, desire and hatred. So fire is compared to desire and ice is compared to hatred. Just as fire and ice both have the capability of destroying this entire world, in the same way, if a person has these two emotions very strongly in him, desire and hatred, then both these emotions can destruct him also. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. Desire means a strong feeling of wanting to have something and favor means approval or support. The poet here says that I have Tasted desire means I too have desires or every human being has desire of something. But if the emotion of desire becomes uncontrolled inside us, it takes the form of a fire and then it becomes a fiery emotion, a burning passion. Now this desire is compared to fire, just as that group of people who feel that fire can destroy this world. In the same way, if you have a fiery desire of something, if you have a burning passion of something which is uncontrolled, then also it can destroy your life. So, the poet 
supports those people who say that the world can be destroyed because of the fire in other words the poet wants to tell us that if the entire humanity does not control their desires then it can be a doom for them then there can be a day when this humanity will come to an end but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate perish means die the poet here says that if there was a second chance for the world to die or to get destroyed then hate is another thing which can destroy it so just as desire can destroy the human being in the same way hatred can also destroy a human being and too much of hatred in this world is enough to destroy this entire world to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice suffice means be sufficient the poet here is trying to compare ice with the emotion of hatred and he says that just as hatred can destroy the humanity in the same way if this entire world is covered with ice if this entire world gets frozen the temperature dips below what is necessary for life then also the world will get destroyed though slow and steady hatred has the same effect that desire has on us so if given an option between fire and ice ice would be just as good as fire to destroy the world in other words if given an option between desire and hatred then both are equally capable of destroying this humanity so basically the poet wants to tell that both these options should be in control they should never go uncontrolled because then the life is sure to end at the beginning of the poem the poet says that there are two kinds of people in this world some people say that ice will destroy this world and some people say that fire will destroy this world in the first stanza of this poem the poet beautifully describes how fire can destroy but at the same time if you compare fire with an emotion of human beings that is desire you will understand it how fire is a component of nature and we all know how it destroys and creates havoc if it is left uncontrolled it can burn out everything in the same way we humans also have desires okay but if we do not control our desires then they can become fiery just as fire and if our desires are not under our control then definitely they can destroy our own life and imagine if each one of us have uncontrolled desires what will happen to this humanity of course the world the human beings the entire mankind will come to an end. in the second stanza the poet is drawing a parallelism between ice and hatred now imagine a scene when this entire world freezes just like an ice age nothing will live everyone will die because everyone will be frozen it will be cold right so this ice is compared to the human emotion of hatred what happens when we have hatred inside us we become indifferent we become insensitive we do not give warmth or love to the other person we become very cold in our behavior so when we understand this concept we can easily relate that just as ice is cold similarly hatred is also cold it has a slow power of destruction unlike fire fire has a fast or rapid power of destruction but ice has a very slow speed of destruction so in both the cases even if it's fire or it is ice both can destroy the world in the same manner if we have these two emotions either desires uncontrolled desires or uncontrolled hatred then both these emotions can 
destroy the humanity or mankind. Therefore, the poet suggests us that anything in excess is never good for anyone. Even if it is the positive emotion or the negative emotion, both these emotions have to be in balance. You may have desires, but see whether they are under control or not. See whether you can fulfill them or not. See because of your desires, are you harming anyone or no? Check that. On the other hand, hatred. Hatred in itself is a negative emotion. Yes, and we all have been taught that we should not have hatred for each other in our hearts because that makes us very emotionless. That makes us so closed off that we stop caring for others. So this was what the poet has described in this poem very beautifully by making comparisons between fire and ice and on the other hand, desire and hatred. Now, after this quick summary, let's move on to the poetic devices and rhyme scheme used in this poem. The first poetic device that is used in the poem and we are going to take is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of a consonant sound at the beginning of two or more words which are closely placed. Example of alliteration is the sound of fur in favor fire and wor in world will. The next poetic device is imagery. Imagery is used to make readers perceive things involving their five senses, means they can imagine when they read. Two such examples from this poem are, some say the world will end in fire and to say that for destruction, ice is also great. The next poetic device is anaphora. Anaphora is the repetition of a word or expression at the start of two or more consecutive lines. Example is some say is repeated at the start of lines one and two. Next is personification, which is to give human qualities to inanimate objects. In this poem, fire and ice are capable of destruction. Thus, the poet personifies fire and ice by giving them mind and power to destroy anything. Rhyme scheme. A rhyme scheme is a rhyming pattern that is created at the end of the lines of poetry. If the last word of every line rhymes with the previous one, then we give the same letter or else we give it a new letter. Now let's find out the rhyme scheme of this poem and take the first stanza first. The first line will always be given the letter A. Coming to the second line, the last word does not rhyme with the first one. So we'll give it a new letter B. In the third and the fourth lines, the last words rhyme with the first line. So we'll give it the same letter A to both the lines. Let's come to the second stanza. The first line rhymes with the second line that is twice rhymes with ice. So we'll give it the same letter B. The next line does not rhyme with any of the words in the previous lines. So we'll give it a new letter C. Next, ice rhymes with twice and ice in the previous stanza, which has the letter B. So we'll give it the same letter B here also. The next is great. Great rhymes with hate. So we'll give it the same letter C here. And suffice rhymes with ice and twice, which will take the same letter B. Therefore, the rhyme scheme of this poem is A, B, A, A, B, C, B, C, B. What's the moral of this poem? The moral of this poem is we should know how to control our emotions. If we let our negative emotions uncontrolled, then someday it is going to harm us. It will end the peace and love in our life. That is all in the session today and I'll flash the question answers in front of you for your reference and I'll see you again in my next video with a new topic. Till then take good care of yourself and stay balanced, stay controlled. Thank you. Bye-bye.